in the case of Kamala, we need a we have a problem because it seems that you, you know this this last speech, this concession speech was um, I th I think it was I thought it was from the heart. She seemed relieved in many ways, but there was something off. Like I think that we have heard this before, and thanks to well, what's this uh, this account? that they create like a compilation, not a compilation, but a combination of what was Kamala's words and what were Hillary Clinton's words in the same scenario. So let's let's watch. This was from the account, the recount. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for. This is not the outcome we wanted or we worked so hard for. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition. Last night, I congratulated Donald Trump and offered to work with him on behalf of our country. Well, so far, that, that second part, you know, it, it is obvious. You have to congratulate your opponent and you have to be uh, willing to work with him. And in the case, well, Kamala has to work a bit harder because, well, she has to help the transition herself because she's the VP. But the first part, it, 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 it is like um, it took me by surprise in the sense that, yeah, it is absolutely not what you expected. But why? did you repeat a Hillary's words? Is it that they have the same team? Is, is this the same team that work, um, in, work for Hillary, is working for Kamala so far? And by the way, the numbers don't lie. One billion dollars cost Kamala's campaign. One billion dollars. So it was against the uh, $330 million uh, was uh, Donald Trump's campaign. And right now they have a debt of 20 million. They are scrambling to find those 20 million because, well, they are 20 million dollars. 20 million dollars in the red. It seems that, you know, all these artists such as John Bon Jovi and uh, Bruce Springsteen singing, it was not for free. It's a bit pathetic, don't you think? It's that like you have to pay them for their endorsement and their songs. That's... That's why Beyoncé did not sing. That's why Beyoncé did not sing. Because maybe the, 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 the tab was too high for the campaign. It was, it was going to be like, like 10 times. Uh, this is 10 times that John Bon Jovi or Bruce Springsteen, what are we going to do? Just tell her to speak for four minutes and fool everybody thinking that she's going to sing. Not even half a song, let alone... Yeah, you know, Taylor Swift. Over the 107 days of this campaign, we have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every walk of life and background. We've spent a year and a half bringing together millions of people from every corner of our country to say with one voice that we believe that the American dream is big enough for everyone. So the well, the, the problem with this is that I can understand why Kamala was forced to say that she brought people together. Because that is the essence of the Democratic Party. You know, the conservatives were the, you know, the ones who rejected, you know, all, all people outside of their thinking. And the Democrats were, oh, yeah, let's bring everyone together. But... What did they morph into? What did the Democratic Party morph into? Like the party that rejects everything that is not what they say. If it's not what they, if you don't abide by their rules, you're a Nazi. You're garbage. You are you are less than human. That's what they have done, and they were so so blind to see that they were driving people away. It is, it is a, the greatest thing. It is the greatest thing that the results speak for themselves. That massive, not only the White House, but also the Senate, the House, and, um, and the, of course, there's a currently a majority, a conservative majority in the Supreme Court. So, well, the current 
uh, the current um, circumstances support that they are wrong. You try to bring people together, but only on paper, only by by name. It's only that's just words. This that's dust in the wind. That's you have to speak with your actions. That's the young thing. people who are watching. It is okay to feel sad and disappointed, but please know it's going to be okay. Yeah, but please tell tell those uh, women and some men if we can call them men that we have seen in these days, especially in yesterday's show, uh, their reactions are a bit over the top, a bit over the top, and they should, you know, control their emotions. To the young people in particular, I hope you will hear this. On the campaign, I would often say, when we fight, we win. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes the fight takes a while. All right, this is going to be, this is going to take uh, a bit more than a while. At least, um, let's say some, um, let's say some 12 years. That doesn't mean we won't win. That doesn't mean we won't win. This loss hurts, but please never stop believing that fighting for what's right is worth it. It's worth it, yeah. Oh, so... They're going to win at some point. This is the eternal dance of Republicans and Democrats. But that's one thing that I noticed is that Kamala, yeah, Kamala was uh, sad, of course. This is something that is natural. She lost, uh, was 107 days of campaign. It's not that much for the standards. It should have been more if uh, hadn't... Um, uh, the circumstances should have pointed to Biden. We're going to be talking about Biden in a minute. But I think she was relieved. That's what I felt from her body language. At, at last, I am, I'm out of this. She was a fish out of the water with all of this. And I'm really glad that she, she realized this and she was not made for, for the job. And she drank, that was the worst part, she drank her own Kool-Aid in the sense that she believed all the lies that... Not only her team, but you know the puppet masters tried to push onto her, in which uh, I think it was a bit rushed, picking her. I think they they really thought that they could pull a uh, combine Obama and Hillary. Let's uh, let's have the first woman president. Everybody is going to vote for her. Yeah, especially women. And uh, we have ex an example right next. But first, we need to see these uh, reactions. Um, this is a um, very public picture, so I have a no no problem in just putting it in here. I, I thought it was uh, important. But uh, it combined between her husband and Tim Walls and her, her stepdaughter, uh, they, they, they cried much more than Kamala. Uh, Kamala, Kamala was uh, really strong to, well, control her voice. I gave her that. It's not going to be easy. Um, shouldn't be easy and, and um, an election night that she just went away just like Hillary but again it's like a bit sad for your supporters to tell them that it's it's over it's over but that's the right thing to do I have another clip in here oh yeah this you know the kind of premonitions that I want to uh, mention sometimes a squirrel was seen prancing through the stage right before Kamala spoke. Was it Peanuts' uh, ghost? Was this uh, nev nev never mess with squirrels? Democrats? Yeah, this is something that, that's the lesson that every, every politician should, well, uh, learn. But again, I would, love to, I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. In the meantime, remember to Download my free body language tips right in the description of this video and you will be subscribed to my email list as well. So, 